Well, hello and welcome to this Wednesday's devotional, the first day of spring. Renaissance is in the air, isn't that great? I want to talk to us uh, today about confrontation. And I know it's something that none of us would enjoy, be it either the one having to do the confrontation or the one being confronted. Uh, that's even harder to a point, I guess. But it is something that Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 18 about when it says and we recognize sin in the church so sitting with someone and they are at fault that they should be talked to by the church now this is going to vary isn't it about uh, what type of sin it is and I guess realistically it's going to have a bearing on whether there's a possibility uh, it's an unsafe practice and it's going to affect the safety of others in the church, uh, or even themselves. So, you know, how you confront people in any situation where you have to pass off a, a reflection, which is a, seen as a criticism of someone's behaviour, something they've said is uh, a really difficult situation. We can churn ourselves up inside having to do this. At times, it must be done um, inside and outside the church. I guess one of the, the, the problems for us is that we realise that we're all sinners and we all do things that, you know, at some time or another probably sh would be seen by others and want to be talked about. As a minister, you know, this is something that I've had to do over and over again. And, you know, I guess I just want to talk about, you know, what that might look like in today's time, especially related to the scripture uh, in Matthew 18. Uh, about how we do that in today's times in our community and uh, I want to do that by reading you a case study so this is uh, from an ethics course that I attended and I'm just going to read you this very quickly just to give a, a description of um, you know, what uh, a situation might cause for um, a a minister or someone else to have to confront a person about a certain behaviour. So this is, a, it's quite small, it's not long, let me read it. So a member of the congregation, a father of three daughters, is also a music teacher. He offers to play the organ on Sunday services. That's when the existing organist uh, had broken his arm, was unable to play for a couple of months. He also offered to help the church choir and suggested that they enter a nationwide contest to compete with other denominations across Australia. He's enthusiastic and a much loved man in the community. He gets on very well with everyone and is extremely good with children in the choir. He often has them practice in his house. That's where the scenario finishes. And I guess there's an issue there uh, related to number one, is this person have a working with children check? So is that recorded? As he has a, a national police check as well. Um, we don't know about whether the, that person has these things, but the fact he's sort of new into the church, and it's not just new, you know, especially uh, today's times, a man working with children, there should always be another person in their presence. And here he has uh, you know, children coming over to um, the, his house to practice. So there's an issue there, and that's calls for uh, a form of uh, intervention from a leader of the church in this case. So it's very difficult, isn't it, to have to do that, but it's something, as you can see, that it must be done. And, you know, for me, it's going to be always, if I take the scripture of Jesus about that this needs to be done, and if it is a sin related, uh, as we see, it's something that people are actually, you know, have a, an understanding and intention of bad behaviour, not accidentally putting themselves in a, in a situation like maybe this person is here is you know, how do you enact that? Because it's always a case, I think, for us of trying to treat the behaviour or treat the sin, you know, and not make a judgment on the sinner. Because that person, as we would want, if it was about us, you know, needs to be loved and supported and shown grace and an opportunity to be able to look at their actions and maybe, you know, 
realise that they need to uh, adopt a different type of behaviour. Let me read to you from another related uh, scripture reading that I'm using um, for, this is related to my service on Sunday. It comes from Romans chapter 13. And I read you these uh, statements from Paul who talks about the same thing about people committing these different serious sins like adultery, murder and so forth. And this is what Paul says, when we are to love your neighbour as yourself, that love does no wrong to a neighbour. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So, when we must have these conversations, I think it's always good to prepare ourselves to go in with a case of hearing their story, under, trying to understand where they're coming from, if it's a deliberate act that they need to, that you need to confront them with, as well, it, it always needs to be a case of how you relay that information. Yes, you need to be assertive, but we also need to be caring and supportive of the person. And not just in that conversation as well, for whatever uh, the result of that confrontation is, meaning that they might have to be separated from the congregation because that's just the safest thing the safest option that there is, is that I think we should always be looking at how we support that person outside and inside those times. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is um, love fulfilling the law. Now, see, love isn't a, a one-pronged attack ever. It's about accepting everyone for where they may be at and then trying to apply love to the situation. So our commitment is not just to confront the person, it's to confront them to try and have them in a, put them in a place of see what you're doing is not good and repenting from that and how can we help you in that transition? I think that's, um, I think that's our goal. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, confronting uh, people about their actions is part of our life. This does not relate to just what was happening in the early Christian churches. But we have to do it as well. And it is difficult, but I say, approach it with love. Approach it with an understanding that this is a person, this is a human being, and it is love that will have the greatest effect on uh, curving them. And it'll be by love and offering you know, humility and grace to them is where you will get your best result in that confrontation. Uh, just as I finish, I want to make an announcement, uh, and that is uh, this Saturday, uh, there is uh, Presbytery is holding a Healthy Church, Church Expo. And you can attend that expo uh, either online or um, the church is holding a hub that you can come to the church and uh, watch it from there. There's uh, starts from, um, it's free, it goes from... Um, 9.50 in the morning through to 5 p.m. There's obviously online, there's going to be different speakers. Some of these subjects include uh, working with the young and uh, uh, growing in prayer and building uh, healthy church systems. So there's a, an agenda. If you would like to go to this, uh, either attend it by Zoom uh, on a link or by coming to the church, you need to register and you do this through the presbytery and the lady's name is Vi Richardson and I'm going to give you the phone number. Her phone number is 0491-185-320. So you must ring Vi and register if you want to either attend via Zoom or if you wanted to come to the church as a hub and watch it there. I would suggest to you that if you have the capability to watch it on your your uh, electronic device to do it that way. That is the safest way for us all. I hope you are having a blessed day today. i uh, love to uh, continue to talk to you on Sunday morning at 9.30 through worship where confrontation is going to be my topic. As always, may the blessings of Christ be on you and go into our world to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, I say this. Amen and good morning.